All right, this is Eve uh, Losek 101. Uh, gonna start off with talking about how the different security standings within Eve are affect players within Eve, and then later on in the uh, lecture we'll go into different ship fits and how you should fit a ship versus how you should not fit a ship um so first off within eve you've got three different security standings uh you've got high sec low sec and null sec uh on the map you can see they're denoted by various different colors so the blue and green and then the normal yellow are considered high sec. High sec, you have Concord that intervenes whenever someone does something criminal like shooting your ship outside of a duel or stealing cans or various other things. Uh, you can expect Concord intervention within a certain period of time, ranging from six seconds in 1.0 space to 19 seconds in uh, 0.5 space that is uh so as a group here in wa storm kings operates currently in high high sec and low sec we have a low sec system that we inhabit as well as a single low sec we eventually want to go into null but null sec stuff would have to be another lecture because that's a whole different ball game from either of the other two um high sec your fittings don't matter quite as much as low uh low sec you don't have concord intervention you do lose standings if you shoot someone so and with changes coming up in eve that will play a big part in a in things so we'll be seeing how those affect ganking in high sec, but this is primarily about low sec in this case. Uh, low sec is anything from 0.1 to 0.4 space. Uh, you can expect the belt rats as well as any other rats to rats being NPC pirates to be two to three times as strong and to, as what you'd find in high sec as well as just they react differently. Uh, high risk, high reward. The higher low sec, uh, if you shoot someone, you will get standing hits, but that can, over the course of two weeks, that will drop off. But that is something to keep in mind when shooting in low sec. In low sec, we do have a rule, not purple or blue shooting. Blue being someone that is allied with us, purple being someone in fleet. Uh, that is to protect ourselves because anybody can come in and shoot you in this section of space. Uh, with that being said, uh, there are several things that you should keep in mind when you are in low sec. So the first of which is an intel channel. Uh, in our case, with our low sec system, it would be residence association. Over time, that may change. But for now, it's residence association. I put up a sample intel channel. Basically, when in, in, when in an intel channel, you would go for let's in you would type in certain things based off of your local chat which is something that should always be pushed forward you should never have that uh hidden so let's say you go to open the map and it's in full screen local should always show up above there's three buttons you can hit here to make it to where it always shows above it. Yes, it can make it a pain in the butt, 
but at least if you're not looking directly at your ship, you'll see if someone comes in. As you can see, currently in our the local system I'm in, there's four blues and then me, Karatagetsu. Uh, if there was a new in local, the first thing you'd do is you'd go into the intel. Well, for, first things first, you would dock up if you're able to. Second thing is you would go into the intel and go plus one, the system name, which you can do by dragging and dropping from here, plus one here, then we're just going to say this is a new. And then put, if you don't know what they're flying, NV is no visual. In the fut in future posts, if you do end up seeing what they're in, you'd go up Bastion and then whatever ship they're in. Uh, let's just say they're in a, a Stero. And then send that. That is so that other people will know, hey, this person's flying this. Or in the case of a bigger group, you'd do plus five and then just drop the upt in there so that you could quickly get that out there so that people will know, hey, this is going on. Then you would continue same line up put their names because in our low sex system we do have groups that aren't blued yet or people that aren't blued yet but are technically blue and in residence association if they're seen they'll they will know or they'll message yes that's one of ours because the group that we rent from has a million and one alts that they use out of corp to hunt down people uh they're a major pvp corp that just hunts anybody who's not blue or purple to them uh they have us set as blue so they know it's us but we are still learning what all their alts are so by putting this information in it can also help make it confirm no that's our group we're just using out of corp to do this uh but local should always be the thing that you shouldn't personally. Yes, I have Alliance. I have Storm Kings and friends and Corp attached to it, which means if I switch to Corp, I lose my local visual. If I am in something that matters, I will just pop local out and keep it separate from everything else. Uh, with the new UI, which I personally don't use at this point in time, there is a way to get rid of the actual local chatter. But I don't suggest that because sometimes they'll come in and tell you this Darwinism all is me. So not always the best thing to just hide the actual local chatter. Uh, it can make it save space on screens that don't have a lot of screen space, but otherwise it's just kind of screwing you over. Um, the so one of the things to keep in mind especially in our particular low sec is the rats we have what's called blood readers uh, different areas of space will have different things uh, I'm going to pop my head out of station real quick. What ahead am I in? Actually, what ships do I have at this particular station? None. Lovely. Wait. Oh, that's why. Why do we have so many blues and upped? 
That's interesting. Anyways. Normally, up isn't this populated. But. In our case, it's, uh. Okay, so there's no rats here. Anyways, we have Blood Raiders. Uh, they have different stats for what they can handle. Uh, like the damage types that you should use against them and what they hit you with. Uh, so, I'm going to search up Necro because he is... He has something in his bio that I don't have in mine. So, this tells you what type of damage you should be using. Uh, for Blood Raiders, you'd want to use EM and Thermal. EM is being the primary. Uh, they deal to you Thermal and EM. So, when you're looking at your ship fit, you know you're going into Blood Raider territory. They're going to do several things. One of the things is they're going to shoot you with thermal and EM damage. So when we get into the ship fitting side, you'll see where that will take effect. They will also uh, prevent you from warping, which is called warp scram. And they will uh, n neutralize you. So having ships that don't use capacitor to fire their guns... Or having drones on board is uh, very good. Uh, he has got a lot of information on here. Okay. Anyways, one of these days I'll have to look through his stuff. <laughs> Docking request accepted. Either direction it goes, uh, we're going to move on to our next part, which has to do with the ship fits themselves. Because outside of keeping track, docking up, when you see a neutral, letting them know, those are the main primary things you need to focus on in low sec. The other one has to do with the ships that you fly. Now, courtesy of Skyhammer, who pulled some of our actual doctrine ships and edited them as well as built a couple of our built a couple ships himself because we didn't have ships um we uh have several examples of ships and fits that would that are properly fit so for now we're going to start off with the omen the Omen is a cruiser class ship with an Eve. It is also a Marian, if I remember correctly. Yep. So, as you can see, he's got pulse lasers. Pulse lasers on here are your main weapons. The things we need to focus on is what he has in on armor ships is the low slots, because these numbers over here map. Now, as a Amar ship, they focus on armor as far as their fitting. Uh, difference between armor and shield is some shield will allow you, has a passive recharge rate typically. Uh, different nations' ships are fit or are set up to tank certain ways. In the case of Amarians, they have almost no shields to begin with, but they have a ton of armor typically. So you'll fit them, and they also have slots to increase their actual armor. So on this particular ship, he's put a steel plate, which adds to the raw hit points. But he's also add, added multi-spectrum energized membranes, which include increase the overall resist. The Omen, fortunately, doesn't have much of what we call a hole. A hole would be... Actually, a hole would be something like this. Shield, EM shields, 0%. Thermal shield resistances, 20%. This is how much, when they shoot you, 
they subtract X amount of damage. If you've got a 0% in one of your slots, that means when they shoot you, if they hit you with that type of damage, all of that damage is hitting you. Uh, most of the fits that we've been seeing getting kills on are ships that aren't filling their holes because, as I mentioned, Blood Raiders, EM, and Therm, which means if there's e if they deal EM damage, then you have 0% EM. That means you're taking a whole lot more damage than you need to. In this ship's case, the fit, this is subtracting 69% EM and 59% thermal. And that's with my skills. Everybody's skills affect how much that is. Uh, I have uh, capital level skills, so my stuff is automatically probably going to be higher than the average person. Um, but the same principle does apply. The higher you get your resists, the better it is. But don't all go straight resist because it doesn't matter how resistant you are. If you're paper thin, you're going to get your butt handed to you. Does not matter. The other thing to keep in mind is also your damage. Fighting Blood Raiders, you're going to want to get, oh, once again, want to use EM and thermal damage to hit them. So your gun, your, the weapons that you use are going to want to reflect that. In this case, they deal 10 E or the Scorch deal 18 hit points of EM, four hit points of Thermal. So they're dealing EM and Therm. So that's what you would load into your guns more than likely. Either that or the Conflag. Conflag is 17.7, is a equalized, but it has a less range, a shorter range. So if they're right up on top of you, switch to Conflag. Otherwise, Scorch is probably better. Um, and that's for the Omen. Now we're going to move on to that's the Raptor Tornado. Harbinger. Once again, another Amar ship, which means it's going to be armor fitted. And this is the battle cruiser, which means it's going to have higher resists to begin with, as well as more slots to fit more things. In this case, you'll notice he, ha the fit has steel plates, which is your raw hit points. It also has about a thousand more hit points, which is kind of low considering that the battle cruiser should have slightly more, but its resistances are about 10% higher overall. Uh, he has a reactive armor hardener, which is an active module. That reduces his capacitor. He also has a repper, which will repair the hip hit point damage done to you. He also put a damage control, which I'm surprised there's not one on the other fit, but it is what it is uh that increases resist so he has three resist modules a hit point module or four resist modules basically a hit point module and a armor repper in his low slots so that it can sit there and help once again defend against what they're dealing uh guns are pretty much the same so same same deal fit use the weapon or use the ammo that handles it best uh caracal now we have a couple different variants i could show off i'm just going to use our actual doctrine fit which is uh rapid lights missiles would be ideal against blood raiders in that they don't use capacitor to fire so
In this case, the Caracol is a shield ship. Uh, he has a single resist module in his low because all his modules are in his mids. Uh, Multi-spec shield hardener brings his shield resistances up quite a bit. Though he does have a hole that he did not fill here. But on the Caracol, it's kind of hard to fill that particular hole. As it's a pretty massive hole compared to everything else. Uh, instead of filling the hole, he instead added the ability to have a larger shield. Which is valid in this situation because the hole itself would be very difficult to fill. Um, your missile types in this case would be uh, Furies, which is your Tech 2s. Nova does... Why he has Nova, I don't know. Um, <laughs> should be Mjolnir and Infernos. Why he doesn't have those in there, I don't know. Probably because he's got them right here. But as you can see, the Infernos deal thermal, the Mjolnirs deal EM. Uh, next fit on our list, and this is, once again, this is a cruiser that you would actually be able to use to fight to a limited extent in low sec the NPC rats. When it comes to players, that's just a whole different ballgame. And unless you know your fits and know everybody else's fits, I would suggest staying out of PvP unless you have someone help you build a very specific PvP ship. Uh... Or unless you're in a fleet that has the ability to handle things. Uh, Vexor is Galant, which is once again an armor ship. Uh, so in this case, it uses Gauss guns. Uh, I'm not as familiar with those, but this is a drone boat. So it's meant for you to stay away and use your drones to deal damage. The guns are just secondary. So you'll want to pull whatever drones work best for the space you're in. In this case, either the Acolytes or the Hammerheads would work best. Uh, hammerheads, though, are medium. So if you don't have mediums, it would be war... Uh, not warriors. Uh... those hobgob ones I believe yeah hobs so and you can find your damage types by going into showing the info on it and scrolling all the way down until you see damage under attributes so in his case he's got the resists are pretty high even though he only has a DCU and a multi-spec but he put damage amps, so you're using this as a drone. Stay away, keep away, don't let them get close to you, is essentially what that is. Uh, your ruptures. Uh, once again, another armor ship. This one is set up for auto cannons, which means you're going to let them get up close and dirty with you. Uh, decent armor, great as far as for our section of space, decent resistances, a little low on the thermal, but it'll work. Uh, for venture, which is something anybody that's in an alpha would need. Or would be flying when mining. Uh, basically, if you see a rat warp on field and you're in a venture, you're not going to sit there. Get off a field. Um, 
is staying on field is a death sentence for you. Uh, pure, plain and simple, it's a death sentence. Uh, even in a battle that battlefit adventure, you'd be facing that issue. But if you want to increase your survivability for that, so that you can get off the field, Of course, you'll have your miners on there. I uh, believe this is a shield fitted. Yes, yeah, shield tank. So you've got three shield slots and one low slot. So in your low slot, yes, you typically want to put a mining upgrade, but working in low, that's not always your best option. Um, if you want to do that, feel free. But for you, I'd suggest just a basic damage control. It'll increase your EM slightly. Uh, much higher. It's higher than what it was anyways. So in your mid slots, don't worry about shield boosters in this case what you're going to want is an em shield hardener because you have a major hole in the em once you've got that patched in then you'll want a and actually that's an active one we want the non active yeah actually that'll work So now we have the holes mostly patched up in the shields and your shield is low so that's where the extenders will come in to give you a bit more shield problem with fitting a venture is you're not going to have much of anything anyways in low sec like i mentioned they're two to three times as more difficult as a uh as high sec in high sec you might be able to duke it out in low sec your goal is just to get out and hope you survive because you're not going to be able to uh even on its best day the venture will die in one or two shots all we can do is try to prevent that the best that we possibly can. Uh, in this case, you have a four second align time, which means the moment that they come on field, you've got four seconds before you're off field. That's why you put these to hopefully last more than one shot. <laughs> the other thing we can do to reduce your uh, I should be able to just fill it up with tubes. Is to reduce your line time. In this case, you're at 2.81 seconds. So not quite as bad, not perfect, but you'll get off field if they don't warp directly on you and don't have the range to just one shot you. Uh, then you might survive in a fit like this. As you can set, see, it's not all that expensive of a fit. So losing a venture isn't always a big deal. We would prefer you not because various other reasons up to and including every kill that is that hits a kill board means more heat gets drawn, which means players will start paying attention and come to shoot and mess around with us. Um, this is, like I said, this is going to be your typical venture fit that you'd want to use in low sec. Um, for alphas, if you're flying a barge, that's 
different story, different fitting based on the barge and based on how you want to use it. But ventures are fairly easy. Uh, so to kind of go over things a little bit, uh, basically, when in Losec, keep an eye on local. Remember to post to the Intel channel that the Corp gives you. The Intel channels will, we will, if a new Intel channel pops up, it will, I will send it out in a mail and I'll post it in the uh, Corp MOTD, which reminds me I kind of need to post the current one into the Corp MOTD. But we'll send out a mail. Keep an eye on your mails because we'll have pertinent information. If we get notification that this, up this hot or whatever system we happen to be living in is very hot at the time uh leadership will post on our discord check it daily because there's always something going on even if for a few days you don't see a post or an announcement that that won't change that there could be check it daily before you log into the game, make sure nothing important has come up. If something has, you'll at least know. If nothing's come up, nothing's come up. Uh, over the past few weeks, things have been changing very quickly. And so uh, there's been most days I've had some kind of post tagging Storm Kings, letting you guys know, hey, this is going on. This is what's up, yada, yada, yada. Uh, so, like I said, keep on mail your fits. Fill in your holes. Make sure you have the right damage types when you're going out. If you're going out in a combat ship. Uh, don't crap fit. If you need help with fitting or don't know exactly how to fit a ship, ask. I will happily sit there and build a fit sp specifically tailored for you based off of your skills. Uh, ask me. Ask Kusiag. Ask sky um though in all honesty sky only is good for pve but if you're trying to do pvp don't ask sky <laughs> um but for pvp activities <laughs> ask any one of us we do know what we're doing and have several years of experience with it um and are good with being able to tailor and create fits on the fly that are good and will work. Um, certain ships are better for PvE than others. So do also keep that in mind. If we tell you that ship's not going to be good for that, it usually means it's because of whatever bonuses it gets or the ship type itself isn't survivable in certain situations. Uh, otherwise, like I said, we're available both in the Storm Kings Discord and in WA Discord all, at all hours of the day. Um, and that will about wrap this up.